whatever is out there, tell us whether we are live. We're live! <laughs> Every time we're always so excited to be live. So, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. Today is our number ninth passion dialogue. It has been nine weeks, uh, no, nine, nine weeks, nine weeks, exactly. Nine weeks of amazing journey. And uh, for the one that who don't know who we are, we are Zaza Zhu. My name is Jing Jing. I'm Cassandra. So we are a discrete e-commerce ecosystem to guide women to explore, experiment, and enhance your our sexual and intimacy journey through education, consultation, and curation of products based on your individual needs. So why we started this venture is we really aim to normalize sexual wellness for every woman in daily life, like your sisters, like our friends, definitely for our the next generation of our daughters, and really to create a safe space, create a compass to guide women, let women to explore safely sexuality and intimacy, 360 degree. So today we are talking about something less sexually focused, it's about language of love and language of sex. We have, because I, I know I need, I need to have my very female voice of saying that, and uh, we just had an investor pitch with men, and that the language I use there needs to be very masculine, and my, I need to make my sounds very, there are statistics saying that you know women have a lower voice, make a more compelling story when they talk to men, but our audience are, most of them are still women. So today when we talk about language and love and sex, I will try to do my very best to have a feminine voice. I still think your voice is very feminine and lovely, yeah? yeah. <sighs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so today, why we don't want to talk about language of love and sex? Because we have been discussing many things in the previous um, episode about sexual fantasies, sexual uh, is it consent, everything is sexual education, everything sort of uh, transactional, some sort of uh, to the fact. And then today we have uh, in the meanwhile also many couples reaching out to us, especially unfortunately I would say more female audience than male audience telling us we actually have a problem that is quite obvious, not sex per se as an app, is I simply want less, my partner want more. What do I do? This is a question that there is no good answer to that. Then we actually get into discussion with them and then say, okay, what exactly is it? Is it, um, is it because uh, maybe we need to spice things up? Is it because you guys have been together for too long? Then we realize that is actually not true. There are some couples, they have just been there for three months, where you think they should be right there and doing it passionately, yeah. like the millennials. Honeymoon period. Honeymoon right more and but they aren't and there's still a more women coming to us there was, was one exception a guy tell us actually okay through the mouth of his girlfriend so she said she says you know i actually want to have my boyfriend to be intimate more but then every time she if i asked her or made an attempt she would like you know, like why do you think something that's so dirty why do you constantly think something is so dirty and she says to me you know this is something that is completely against my belief. But that's so hurtful. So hurtful, yeah. And then this is, I think, this is where the language of love actually is play a very, very big role in our relationship with ourselves, in relationship with others. So as I think most of you know, I didn't know that I had to learn this as well. So there are actually very famous book from Gary Chapman about the five language of love. So for the one who don't know, the five languages are words of affirmation, saying that saying good things i love you i care about you i appreciate things that you do which we agents are very bad at yes in a way because we believe in tough love uh -huh. so i see actually you know parents instead of parents and kids and fighting and then the kids climb the door and say i'll never come back and then the mom said you better never come back did you forget your key this is this is agent kind of love this is i think for what affirmation Word of affirmation is some sort of on our language. Um, so the second one is quality of time. So the fact that I spend a lot of time with you, with your partner, is something that if this is the language that he or she speaks, this actually gives you the, it's, it's better than just saying, I love you, I love you all the time, but then again, you don't end up spending time with me. So quality of time. 
the third one is receiving gifts, what we really love a lot. <laughs> so really as an appreciation, because yes. it is something good for me, that's why I, as an appreciation, I want to buy something that I think that, for example, is on Azul Experience Box, <laughs> something that you really appreciate and then we can you know, enjoy together. An event, for example, a concert ticket. Yes. The fourth one is acts of service. I really do something for you, mm -hmm. I sort of carry right. your bag, um, you know, visit your mom, although I don't like to, <laughs> and also an Asian thing. <laughs> yeah, but, but really, um, so the other day I was uh, communicating to my uh, uh, my man at home, and I told him, you know, my language of love is acts of service. Oh, really? Yeah, and then so, okay, I didn't say this to him last night, but he actually helped to set up all our computers, uh, oh, all yeah. our computers, right? Right. You know, without me asking, you know, when you come too. back, you know, it was like dinner time, he just put everything down and then he started turning up all the computers and oh, started doing everything. Very, nice. like, oh, very sweet. I didn't even have to open my mouth to ask, right? Yeah. And then he did it, right? And she thought that was really nice. Oh. And the same, but of course I was busy doing something else, but thanks. I know, and then that's the interesting part. Imagine if his language is actually a word of affirmation. Mm. The fact that you, you would have said, imagine not the act. Then you have said, oh my, I really appreciate, very often I think, especially in world of affirmation, we Asian are quite yeah. that, including myself, that we praise less, and then... But yeah. maybe, maybe I cannot finish my <laughs> As well, so it's always a struggle, but sometimes I think that the little things actually really, if you understand the language of love of your partner or of yourself, it actually gives you, sometimes very small things make a big difference. Mm. Yes. And the last one, of course, I think the most common one, physical touch. That the fact that I, you know, I, do, oh, I really appreciate what you have done, and then I hug, and this is what, again, we are very bad as Asian, mm -hmm. somehow not within our culture. And I have this friend, mm -hmm. uh, so we were just having a, a random chat every day, and, and she said that, um, so the couple, they had some, something that they did not actually discuss through, and so it has been hanging in the, the heart mm -hmm. about it. And then, and then, so when the partner came home, she just automatically go there and then mm. just gave her a hug, right? Gave mm. her partner a hug and say that I'm really sorry for what what has happened between us, mm. but I do not know how to express myself. Mm. But this is my way of mm. saying uh, sorry. But I, you know, I still love you. But and and she couldn't articulate. Yeah. But for her uh, to step up and to give that hug, mm. that physical hug, was awesome. her way of expressing her love uh, to resolve to. to, to to really express how she felt about the, yeah. the relationship. So that in itself, I thought was a, uh, you really need to appreciate that that is a step on uh, an effort on, on the side of her to step up and do that. Uh, and that is her language of love. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's actually, especially if you understand your own language, and more importantly, it's not only for partner, also partner in many, your, your mom, your, your, your kids, mm -hmm. and then because we all speak different kind of language. Of course, every time we associate language with words, it's many things that words can't tell. Your mm -hmm. ability to tell words, especially if you are communicating with someone who is less expressive, who is rather a listener, mm -hmm. then, or rather a toucher, then your language is very, very different. Okay. So it's not only limit, we should not limit that into language. So then when we raise about this topic, going back to the initial, that couple reaching out to us and saying that, um, sex is actually, I don't want to have sex, but then my partner constantly wanted and keep rejecting him, so we somehow now get into, you know, a, a long jump, a cold war that, you know, he said, I don't want it, and he says, but I want it, then we fight every time, then other things, then we will start with other things, I don't want to wash dishes, but then I still wash it, and you should do me a favor, so actually most of the time, the, in, in the verbal language, we have many couples reaching out to us and saying, this is not working, how can we solve it? So we actually want to talk, talk about a little bit about the actual act of sex is actually also a form of expression of language of love. So it's actually an entry point for experiencing love and intimacy for most of us in a way. And but both men and women from our audience have experienced that during intercourse they feel most safe and free. Mm -hmm. This is actually a very interesting thought that we have. We saw that you know sex is actually a such an exciting act, but safe and free is also have been quite a strong expression. An uh, adjective that which is sex, right? If you want to express oh, how was sex last night, for instance, yeah, um, 
those are some interesting adjectives that actually came up. Mm. So, so really, I think when you are comfortable with that party, uh, yeah. then, then that expression and the freedom to express yourself and to actually enjoy yourself uh, uh, to the max uh, really comes out very easily and strongly. Exactly. So, so when, so, and then now if the language of love, for example, of course it's never pure sex, no? But for example, if intercourse, sex as such, is tied to a person's uh, emotional health, the one who expressed this is safety for me, this is you know, intimacy for me, it can negatively impact them. So when you does not actually sh share the same viewpoint, mm -hmm. you could hurt other person very easily. So we don't always make the healthy connection between emotion and intercourse for many different reasons. And one of the primary reasons is that a partner whose, let's say, primary interest is sex isn't always able to articulate how the act of intercourse helps them on a level that reaches beyond just the surface of just sex per se. You know? So therefore, if a partner, your partner, sees that there are significant others' consistent request of um, having sex is separate from their need for a emotional fulfillment and freedom that they couldn't easily, if you easily turn them off, this is actually quite hurtful. So, and then this is all very often the case for a couple that identify as having different love languages for the partner who love language is sex, is being, let's say, denied access on such a basis that can contribute to their emotional shutdown in their relationship. So that at the end of the day, if you focus only on the act without a clear understanding of, of, of its impact, it's going to be very challenging with your partner. So couples that share different love languages have to really must acknowledge how challenged it can be for their partner to stretch beyond their comfort zone and then to meet their needs. This is both for the receiving part and for the giving, for the giving part. The fact that I have to ask, the fact that I have to say yes even if I don't want to. So very often it's also the case that if a partner who doesn't require intercourse as much as the, your, the other partner, they fail to see the emotional connection their partner has to sex or has the experience that their partner is stretching as much as to speak of their love and language and this love, uh, language of love. So this can actually create a very extremely dangerous dynamic between both partners like I have described before. That it's you parties feel really misunderstood and unfulfilled and the needs is unfulfilled and the lower this cycle plays out, the harder it will be ultimately to get more connected as a couple than we actually drift apart. So at the end of the day, if you and your partner speak different love language and the request of higher sexual frequency has caused problems in the relationship, then you have to talk about it again with a open mind. Yes. So this is something that is, uh, is if, if, if I think our society, we have discussed very often in the past, that sex has been such a demonized topic mm. that you know, sex has to go a little bit more deep into that. That it's, it's something that's perfectly natural 5,000 years ago. Even in you know some of the town and Qing dynasty, yes. it was perfectly fine. But suddenly, it has become it has been forbidden just just like that. Yes. Uh, so going into that, right? I think me if you, I'm a fan of history.com, right? Or history channel. Mm. Uh, when I had time to watch TV in the past. So really, you go all the way back. You actually see a lot of antiques. You see a lot of war drawings. Really about uh, men and women. Uh, um, getting together, mm. right? And um, they all have their roles, they fulfill their roles in the society to allow the family to prosper. Mm. Okay? And uh, images of uh, them having sexual encounters are actually very common in uh, a lot of antics in their fashion, right? Or in their bowls or in their bars and so on. Mm. Uh, be it Egyptian, Chinese, or English and so on. How, and even let's say, like you mentioned, Tang Dynasty, that was the golden age. The golden age in, in, in many aspects, you know, in terms of prosperity and in terms of literature, right? Um, there were many uh, poetry and a lot of literature around uh, uh, relationships, you know, and so on. Because at that time, uh, the topic of sex and having good relationships is still very much an open topic. It's not something to be ashamed of, actually. The, like, 
I was just reciting uh, this very, uh, I think it's very famous, but in case it's not, I'll just recite it. Like, Guan Guan Ju Zhou Zai He Zhu Zhou Yao Tao Shu Yi Jun Zi Hao Shu Very famous. Yeah. This one, yeah, up to modern days, it survived because it's only talking about courtship and relationship, right? And, and this was one of those that survived and very famous. Mm. But I could easily imagine that there were a lot more that are out there mm. that did not survive until today. And what happened? Because in between, Okay, I give all due great respect to uh, Confucius and Confucius, right? Uh, he is a, is a great man with great philosophy, but he is also one of the gentlemen who really championed for San Chong Si Le and really championed about, you know, uh, Nan Zun Yu Wei and stuff like the that. The role of women, yes. the role of men, you know, women should stay at home. You translate into, let's say, uh, modern language. Is that the exact opposite of Me Too a movement? Yeah. Way. So that you you know women have their own role at home. Mm. Yes. And then you should obey your man. Period. This is actually the. Key. Yes. Okay. Maybe I could have misinterpreted. Maybe society, maybe history has 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 twisted his words. Mm. But how it has translated throughout this time is such that that now starts to have the discrepancy between men and women. Right, and this famous Sigmund Freud, so, so, uh, uh, yes. Sigmund Freud, so the German, uh, actually, the, I would say the godfather of German psychology. Yes, the world, uh, he actually, so he had the firm belief that women who do not receive, uh, cannot reach orgasm, actually, can make the more beautiful language, who cannot reach orgasm through natural intercourse, through internal stimulation, are frigid. So, in that Generation that is a, is considered as a sickness. No? Yeah. So so you have famous men who champion certain ideology, yeah. and and because they are famous, they they were the leaders of the days. Yeah. Right? They yes. provide the thought to the leadership, and people were like, oh, whatever this man says, he must be right. And therefore, women who can't achieve uh, 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 orgasm, orgasm through penetrative uh, intercourse mm. must be frigid and there's something wrong with you. Yeah, you, you should see a doctor. That was actually yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, the physical condition. But who is he? I mean, he's just a psychologist, right? Mm. Big deal, right? But, 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 but what he said counts and it, it starts to propagate that whole idea that, that you need to, uh, it's o the only way to, to reach orgasm is through penetrative sex, which is really wrong and really proven right now that based on survey, this is not the case. Yeah. So do not think that, uh, do not be trapped by such a cultural statement that wasn't actually biologically proven or medically proven. Uh, if you bring this back a little bit, we were just discussing some time back that the language of sex itself is actually very male driven. Yeah. Right? For instance, the word foreplay. Okay? When actually a lot of women can reach orgasm by pictorial uh, uh, stimulation. Yeah. Okay? Foreplay in itself, from a man's perspective, mm. you know, if you're trying to, to bring a lady to, to, to climax. You know, climax, you know, that act itself is foreplay to the man, but that act itself is the is the sex act for the women. But you know, you just fight foreplay. Yeah. Yeah? And if some if some somebody actually asks a question, uh, can we skip foreplay today? Yeah. It's almost like telling the women, can we skip sex today? Right? So 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 so, so interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, never thought about that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. For, for yeah. Like that. Okay. okay. What's so, yeah. so you will be happy and I will just be there for you to be happy, right? Um, Alright, sure, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a very male-driven language. Look at the these medical studies, right? The female anatomy and uh, menopause, they are so much less understood because there were so much more male doctors mm. in the space and they start I mean, this is natural. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you study the things that you're interested in, of course. Right. And so you're, you're, you're most close to right? Correct. So, so as a man, uh, you naturally will, will study more about the male's sexual organs and, and when it comes to female sexual organs and menopause and stuff like that, even today, uh, we, we know that there are not enough studies uh, in, in relating to this aspect. That's why now fan tech is so huge. That's why now sex tech is so huge because there's this this empty space whereby the understanding is not enough in order to bring 
uh, the level of understanding on par with what uh, the general public already understands about the male anatomy and their, the male sexual requirements. So beyond yeah. that, right? So oh, right. for the yes. female part, because also the clitoris, no? Yeah. As such, how does the shape and how it functions? So we only discover after the year 2000. It's uh, exactly, right? I mean, in such a modern society, you only understand about the female sexual organ. Uh, and let's say you differentiate between vagina and vulva. Mm. I don't know how many of you out here who's watching actually understand the difference between the two at the moment. Mm. But again, these are these are just body anatomy. Mm. It, to be able to articulate the terms, and, you and yes, you need to understand it first. And if you do not, if you assume vagina is the same as vulva, then you totally misunderstand how do you actually take care and care for yourself from a hygiene point of view. Yeah. Because it's actually very different. You, you, you say the wrong word mm. when you talk to somebody and, then, doctor, you, for yeah, and, then, you, and then they will tell you, oh, this is how you take care of it mm. in terms of hygiene. Right. But it's actually totally wrong right? yeah, because yeah. if you misunderstand uh, the two uh, parts together, uh, oh, then this is an excellent point. This is actually like, because of the misconception of that, no? the miseducation we also have. It's like actually in, 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 in normal organ language, you go to a doctor, you say, my stomach hurt, because you think your stomach is actually your liver. Because you think, oh, this is my liver. And then you tell me the doctor, oh, my stomach hurt. And then uh, he give you some medicine. For your stomach. For your stomach. For your liver. Exactly. Problem, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah. Exactly. So, so really, just understanding, just knowing the term, to even know that it exists. How many of you know the word vulva before I talk about this today, mm -hmm. right? To even know about the term and then to understand the difference between the two and therefore you take care of the two anatomy differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's very important in terms of hygiene, mm -hmm. right? So I think language is a function of culture mm -hmm. and the culture by, by and large shapes how the society looks and uh, at sex and how it expresses what sex and how it it really forms the whole environment of our sex mm -hmm. and it influences so much on the language that we use with each other to talk about sex. So again, going back to the very sweet act of what my husband did yesterday to help me set up all the computers for the company, right? And, and he just said, ah, how do you want to name all your company uh, computers, mm -hmm. right? And, and I said, PC001 to you know, 001, <laughs> just PC00 something. Mm -hmm. And he was like, can you be more creative, my goodness? Like, change the creative field. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm. Okay, I'm not about this. Um, Zalazu vagina, Zalazu vulva, Zalazu penis. And he was like, oh my god, how vulgar can you get? Like, but, True, man. Yeah. So I, I had to say, I had to admit, no, when he catching me this morning, I was like, oh, oh my god, please tell me that you did not convince him to do that, no? And then Cass looked at me and was like, you know which space we are, right? You we you just told the audience in our sexual education panel that you need to name your organ, huh? And what's, that's why I'm saying brain. And then yeah. how is it that saying brain mm -hmm. is okay, but saying the word vagina is not? Yeah. Right. But it's actually another body part. Yeah. Yes. But this is a, this is something that I mean social right. stigma. This is something yeah. that we need to culture. Be, culture need to be evolved step by step. Yes. And this is also one of our let's say major cause that we actually want to change the language of sex as, as a whole. We want to re reinvent. In this case, we do want to reinvent the view. Yeah, I think that there are very very few segments in our day life now. I say okay, you know, oh, don't. Really, What's the point of adding another beauty brand, another facial cream? Oh my God, give me a rest, no? But I do believe that, especially in uh, in femtech, and then especially female sexual well-being, the whole curriculum around sex, the language of sex, need to have a revamp. Yes, completely. It's time for overhaul. Very interesting. For example, when we talk about uh, uh, language, no? no, a little bit debate from language of sex. We are people who still misconcept us, saying, oh, you girls are selling sex toys. Every time if I hear that, I mean, it's partially true with self-sexual enhancement really dedicated to your needs. We do not push any enhancement to anybody who has no need. We have not many, many, many clients that come to us just for the pure, uh, uh, pure education uh, uh, purpose and pure consultation that we are like, Cass always like to say that I, I love them and we're like a compass, really to guide you to the right channel if you don't need anything. But then they, still, they are only coming to us. Oh my God, I heard there is this 
funny bird that is really great for the external clitoris um, um, uh, stimulation. I'm really interested in that. Then I was thinking we will still understand you before we actually get that to you. So just by if you just need to buy any toys, there are many, many. So going back to sex toys, when anybody, if anybody actually tell me that you're just selling sex toys, I feel very offended. And then I was actually in, in at the beginning, I was like, okay, where is my anger coming from? I saw this because he says uh, you are the just. It's not I, because I always start to argue. No, it's about education, consultation. We do not push product. We're not a whole which I usually do, but it's not. It's the Word sex toy that disturbed me a lot. Mm. So what happened is that we did a research uh, a survey with uh, around 50 women are saying, okay, what's your immediate imagination if I throw some words to you? So we throw some words like vagina, throw some words like passion, throw some words of huh? then one of the words masturbation. masturbation, for example. And then we throw a word of sex toys. So consistently, without any exception, and that is women are from all race, no? Dirty pink images. So it's really images like, oh, you know, dodgy shops, dark, uh, something that I do not see, sleazy, shady, all these words coming out. Why is that? Because, as you write from Sam, this is a sex toy is invented by men because this is a toy you play on your partner, female partner, most of the time. So you play with your partner. That's why it's a toy. And for what sex? So a sex toy, huh? Mm. So, but then for women, it's like, ooh, you know, this is really, this is not part of our language. Yeah. yeah. So, if, the, if you're looking at using uh, this, whatever you call it in the back of the mm -hmm. future, we'll come up with it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, for now, we call it sex toy or we call it erotic toys, mm -hmm. right? To, to really enhance our own uh, uh, female pleasure, we, we really need to think about. What is our relationship with these items, right? Mm. Because is it really a toy meant for others to play on, mm. on you, Good or excellent point, or not? Yeah. Or, or actually, this is really just something for you. It's just like if I were to be on my massage chair mm. and I'm just sitting on my massage chair to enjoy a nice day of massage, yeah. right? The, my relationship with really it is simply to relieve my 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 pressure and relieve stress, right? Exactly. So so that is my purpose, right? Not not so much as Play, play, mm. but really to give me comfort. Right? But it's an excellent point on the sex toy. It's your relationship, how you define actually with yeah, with your cream, with you give a definition at the end of the day. It's a it's a enhancement, it's a, there are we will come up with a with a new word on that. But it's it defines your relationship. Then going back to the language of love, at the end of the day, having said all that, the what we wanted to share with the audience again that if you don't know that yeah, sometimes you know something very interesting sometimes when we have a talk i always feel that we are stating the obvious then i actually send it out i had a chat with uh, one of our audience i was like things are so obvious what i'm saying he said no no sometimes just really pointing out that you are presenting something that i already know because you said it because we are the authority in this space for this market at least that because you said it, it gives me a complete. It's somehow one of our audience. I really was really, really exactly, really touched me. She said, because you girls, because who you are, are there to do that. This gave me the affirmation that I am allowed. I am. She actually went to a sex toy store just to see. So, which is great. I mean, it does not need to be as you know? So, because she always wanted to find something for herself, she's very often, most of the time, because she works so much, very often single. She I never dare to try things as we because the language of sex, sex toy is such a dirty, shady and and scary space. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, it's so, not. It's part of our life. Uh, we really want to bring across the awareness that it is not dirty, dirty. That it's really how the culture makes you think that it's dirty, but the fact is, it's part of life. Chinese la shi se xin yin. Right. Food. Food. Yeah. So at the end of the day, so at the end. The whole message, if you love someone, the best way to show is that you speak their language. Yes. Find out what is the language of love. You know, it sounds, if I ask my, you know, my husband, he would say, oh, it sounds so, you know, oh, language of love, so sophisticated. It's not. It's actually just the five common things we have just said. And, and if you understand the language of love, because if you speak the wrong language, although you make a such big effort, you wouldn't be 
it wouldn't be perceived as the effort that you have spent. Exactly. So, and then as sex also is at the end of the day a, a beautiful act of binding, of bonding, union, 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 and then very often if you are op an open minded towards your, your, your um, better half, then at the end of the day, then it's going to become a, from a, a, let's say, forcing, okay, I have to do it because this is, this is, he asked for it. If you think I actually, to do that, I speak the language of love for him, you will experience the act as such very differently. And you don't have to jump into it right to do it. No? People who speak language of love as physical touch is very similar as a sex. So the fact that you, you know, give him a hug, you know, give him a kiss or her, and then give her a rub, and then, you know, just really just, you know, that it's like, you know, it's like, like hugging, and then uh, nowadays we become parents, and then the fact that you hold hands or really have an eating moment, moment and call each other honey, it's, it's, it's not there, it's mom yeah. and dad, it's there. So really speak the language that, you know, you will, you will, you will, you will realize that the act as such is actually rather a bonding, that just you are doing him a favor because you spoke the language of what your partner understood. Call your loved one your dear today if you haven't been calling him or her that for a long time. <laughs> Call to action. All right. So time flies by so fast. Again, I think today is a very, very soft topic, and I hope we raise certain awareness about the language of love. So really act on it today. Find out what's the language of love for your uh, partner, for your mom, for your child, for your for, 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 for whoever you care about, and then try yes. to speak their language. You will make a beautiful day for them and a beautiful day for yourself as well. All right, guys and girls, see you next week on our next fashion talk. Yep. Bye. Like, share, comment. Bye. Bye.